As far as we're concerned, it's so much more fun if you can put in a, a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of chutzpah into the, into the, into the presentation. We feel that, that adds a bit to it. Our faces, our dresses, our moves. It's as important as everything else. It's all part of the package. We've got to prepare ourselves and it's shoulders back and we walk on ready to sing. We all have a uniform. Uh, it's important that we, we all have a folder for our music. We go on and this unifies the, the choir and, and gives us a collective identity. Well, I think it's very important for the entire choir to be committed to what they're doing. And I think then a sense of excitement in the singing will flow naturally from that. And then, of course, there's all this stuff on top, like um, attention to uniform um, or having the correct things in the correct places, of course, on top. But hopefully it will come from the music first. Well, that gives you a varied idea of what presentation means when applied to choral singing. Those are some of the singers in the fourth quarterfinal of the Sainsbury's Choir of the Year competition. And according to the competition rules, the jury will take into account, together with musicianship and technique, just how well each choir presents its program. Well, you don't even have to hear the choirs to realize that they've taken this aspect of their performance very seriously indeed. They've given a lot of thought to their costumes, for instance, whether or not to hold the music, how to get on and off the stage. And all of these things do add to the musical product and generally help the singers to communicate with their audience. But we're going to be looking very closely today at the different ways in which the eight choirs present themselves and their music. happy when they're singing of course and look as if you're really enjoying what you're singing and you're meaning all the words that you're singing as well it's really important it gets a cre it creates the atmosphere for the people listening to you and it's very important to you oh yes definitely we try to bring it across in our music yeah and how do you actually do that do you use your hands or your arms or your bodies or what do you how do you how do you actually present your music yeah well um we try to to sort of sing a different range of music and try to get some pieces that maybe involve a bit of movement and then the more somber pieces of course we sort of you don't want to look too sad but still you don't want to look too giddy at the same time so it just depends on the piece really that you're singing
an exercise in stage presentation by Hallmark of Harmony from Sheffield. But the performance isn't over yet. Take a look at this manoeuvre. I wonder what our adjudicators will make of that. They come from a variety of musical backgrounds. The conductor, Christopher Seaman, Stefano Valerie Masterson, John Manduel, the principal of the Royal Northern College of Music, BBC television producer Yvonne Littlewood, and at the far end, from the barbershop movement, John Wiggins. The next choir comes from north of the border, from Loch Lomond, the Dalvate Singers. about expression and by expression I always want them to feel it from the heart the same way with adjudicating I feel that if they sing from the heart then they don't in this particular case think about real competition do you even go to great lengths to practice the way a choir will walk on and off the platform yes we do I leave that to my girls to do and I think that's important not merely just to wander on but to walk on and think about what you're singing. Do you always sing without music? Always without music, yes. Do you think that's important? Well, to us it is. We feel if we are using our music that we're not as one. And I like to be as one with my choir.
the Alicia Bardsley singers from Stockport. You've already seen one barbershop chorus in tonight's quarterfinals, so you know the sort of polished routine that these choirs produce. But this does take hours of preparation and the combined skills of a whole team. The White Rosettes, a ladies' barbershop chorus, lay their plans in a front room in Leeds. <laughs> the first thing we do is we look at the song, the type of songs that we're going to be singing. Um, and then we basically design the outfit around the type of song so that it's the best possible way of presenting that type of package. The top priority really for us is the sound. Um, but the whole thing, the, the aim, our general aim is to entertain people, so it's very important to us that we look good as well as sound good. We try to achieve a uniform effect um, through the entire chorus, and that's one way of doing it, um, by giving everybody a hat, because of course everybody has different colour hair and different hairstyles, and also with the type of outfits that we have, it does finish, finish the costume off quite nicely. Uh, the first costumes were rather basic and uh, they weren't tied to particular songs. But the four we have now, are, uh, they all have their own particular songs, a group of perhaps six or eight songs, which we sing with the, uh, the different dresses. We stress the, the blue and the gold in our blue and uh, gold dresses, the sunny side up, the Alice blue gown, sunrise, sunset, birth of the blues. And then with our soldiers' costumes, we do the things that go in with it and the band songs. The only one we, that we have actually disposed of is one that we sold to uh, an up-and-coming uh, other chorus. There was less of them. We didn't have enough to go around the girls. Now we are 50 girls, and so we sold it to them very reasonably. We always think it's the difference between radio and television. With radio, it's great. If they sound beautiful, you can sit back and enjoy it. With television, they've not only got to sound beautiful, they've got to look good as well. And what we try and do is add that extra dimension to our singing. I mean, we do a song called Barbershop Strut which is very much a dance-type song. So that sort of laid the way open for me to do dance-type movements. That, that ever-loving barbershop. Now, you come in on the barbershop strut. It's somebody's echo, who's? Right. As you come in, will you put a knee stand on it? Because what's happening at the moment is becoming a very weak, weak move. Yeah? What a lot of you just going is from here to here. Will you put a knee stand on it? Put a knee stand on it and a head move. Okay, you have right. to put foot on one, two, three, you have to put foot, your left foot, here, you gotta bend your foot, your right foot, very near, and almost here, and then you sway right and left, and now your hands are going up, and then you do it in the barbershop, they call it barbershop, why not, cause it's a barbershop, right? A song moves in a series of climaxes, and it's telling a story. So really all we do is apply the fact that we speak with three voices, the face, the voice and the body, um, in fact, to barbershop. And most of the moves that we do are very much the natural moves, but overemphasized to reach, shall we say, to the audience through those footlights. <laughs> and then hopefully we get over that stage and it becomes the natural part of, of selling that song. Because it, it is, that's what we're doing. We're selling the song. Now take it slowly this time. Right, set the two senses. Come on, you silly thing. <laughs> Right, Sally and Irie should be in. Then Janet and, and Connie fit in. Right, now hang on a minute, who's here? No, I'm just... <laughs> right. <laughs> you were late, Pat. If there is something on the television which is just pure sound, I'll make a bet that most people will then start getting out their knitting or doing something else, because you can use your ears uh, without using your eyes. Whereas with what we try to do, you might miss something if you don't watch. We got it there.
So the hard work paid off. They got on and off stage without mishap and made a very slick performance. The next choir comes from Northern Ireland and was in the competition in 1986. The Belfast School of Music Chorale. Manchester boys are now familiar faces in the competition, having already competed in the past two. Their final piece is given the sort of performance they're well known for.
1984, the youth competition was won by the Sheffield Girls Choir, and 23 of those girls have returned this year to compete in the adult section, regrouped and renamed Harley Quinn. And a lot of us were going away to university come to the end of school um, and we found that once we got away there was nothing left for us and we couldn't rehearse on a regular basis with the choir so we asked Mrs Pike if we could have a choir of our own to meet in university holidays. Did you actually stay together because you'd won the competition? Do you think it made a difference? It helped. I think it was really the start of um, a tremendous career for the girls choir. What do you think? in your own mind about presentation. How do you feel it's best to present the music to the audience? Mrs. Pack stands at the front going, smile, smile. But I think it's something you have to really just get used to. You have to get over your nerves and you have to learn to smile. <laughs> the youth choir going forward to the semi-finals of the Sainsbury Choir of the Year, Manchester Boys. <laughs> adult choirs going forward to the semi-finals of the Sainsbury Choir of the Year in order of appearance, Hallmark of Harmony. <laughs> and Harlequin. Well, a big day for Sheffield with the hallmark of Harmony and the Harlequin going through, joined by the Manchester Boys Choir. Next week, we'll be the first of the semi-finals. We'll also be doing a little bit of a feature on youth and music, but I'm sure that'll be overwhelmed by the great excitement of the semi-final itself. That'll be from Buxton, for now from Manchester, amid scenes of great excitement. Goodbye. <laughs>